on behalf of the Saxe Historical Society Board of Directors and the membership of the Saxe Historical Society, I want to welcome each of you to this wonderful, beautiful day in which we pay tribute to the uh, fellows who, and women who have served in our services. Now, tradition with us is to ring the bell at 11 o'clock. Uh, electronics involved in ringing the bell something went wrong and the bell is not able to be rung but it is a tradition I'll back off Bobby it is a tradition because in 1919 President Wilson uh, after this is following uh, World War one uh, signed a proclamation that declared that on the 11th month the 11th day at 11 o'clock all Americans should stop what they're doing and all businesses should stop and stop and pay tribute to those men uh, who died in World War II fighting for a country. So we just made that our tradition here to ring the bell at that time and it's always in honor of not only those people but they were for World War II, Korea, Vietnam, all this coming on. So it's a, it's a tradition that we ring the bell in honor of those who have served. But on behalf of, the, of our group, I want to welcome each of you. Uh, I want to remind you, before you leave, if you would, be sure to sign the register at the front door to the museum. If we would like to have a record that you were here, and we'd appreciate very much if you would uh, if you sign that. This is our fifth annual celebration. and. Uh, uh, we again welcome you and hope that you'll enjoy the program today. Jim Mathis will come now to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. Good morning. Would everyone please stand, place the flag, and recite the Pledge of Allegiance with me, please. Thank you very much. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light was so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright seated. I know that we've been up and down, so please stay seated as we go to God in prayer. Oh, holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you uh, for the opportunity to remember, to remember the freedom that we have, to remember those who have fought for our freedom. So, Lord, we have those on our hearts and on our minds that we have lost their lives in battle. 
So Lord, we honor those names in this moment. Oh, holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for those who continue to serve our country. We thank you that they place themselves in harm's way so that we may have the freedom to gather in places like these. So keep our servicemen and women safe here in our country and across the entire world. Send your spirit to be with them, to watch over them, to protect them as they continue to protect us. So Lord, we lift these prayers up to you on this day. In the name of the one who gives us life and gives it to us abundantly, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I would like to recognize Mayor uh, Mike Fields. I want to welcome everyone here. Thank you for being here this morning. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank each of you here today for your service and all those that came. Where is there no greater honor than serving our country in the military to protect our freedom and democratic way of life? Whereas tens of millions of Americans have served the armed forces of the United States and hundreds of thousands have given their lives while serving the military. Whereas the contributions and sacrifices of the men and women who've served in the military have been vital in maintaining our freedoms and the way of life we enjoy by the people of the United States and around the world. Whereas we owe a debt of gratitude to those who have sacrificed for our liberty and for the security of our nation. Now therefore, pursuant by the powers vested in me as the mayor of the city of Saxe, I do hereby proclaim November 8, 2014 as Military Appreciation Day in the city of Saxe, Texas and encourage all citizens to recognize the valor of our veterans by displaying the flag of the United States, often at their homes and at their businesses. Thank you. There you go. year I did a little presentation for uh, Dave uh, here to honor him and this year I'm going to honor James X by presenting his grandson Evan Sutton with a special coin and a little letter. Evan if you'll move These are what in the military they call challenge coins. Sometimes when you see the pictures of the presidents at their desk and you see the credenza behind them, you will see these coins that are mounted in display cases. Different units uh, in the Navy, the ships and stuff, when presidents and other uh, dignitaries would visit, they would present them with these coins to symbolize the visit to that unit or that ship. This got carried on and companies started picking up onto it and they made these coins for everything. They have one that I found quite interesting and it represents the presentation of the burial flag military member to the family member. And I've been giving these coins out for about eight years to family and friends. This year, I'm going outside the family and to hopefully a new friend. I heard a story the other day. I was here helping the ladies at the society, and uh, Virginia Stone told me a story about James Axe passing away, and his grandson didn't get to get one of his burial flag. And he was a little disappointed because he really loved his grandpa. So I said, I think I have something that can 
remedy that to an extent. It won't be the same, but it will be something unique. So I had a coin engraved. There's a place on the back you can have the name and the date of birth and uh, year of death. And I've had this coin engraved. And on the front, like I said, it depicts the military member with the white gloves presenting the burial, folded burial flag to the next of kin. On the back, there's a place for the engraving. And then also, there is a uh, little uh, engraving onto it. You have to have a magnifying glass to read it. So I got my magnifying glass out years ago, and I typed it all out in a letter. And I'd like to read that. And it says, for service to a grateful nation. Once a U.S. flag is lifted from the casket, it is tilted down in front of the cas casket to block the view. The flag is then held up for everyone to see, and taps is then played softly in the distance. This is referred to as presenting the colors. Tradition holds that at this time, the fighting spirit of the veteran then enters the flag. Once the flag is folded, both the flag and the veteran are formally retired forever. Yeah. I hope you enjoy that. Thank you. At this time, Brent Franks will introduce our speaker. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry, let me say just a word. Ash was in Tokyo Bay when the Japanese surrendered. Okay, she is saying that James Axe was in Tokyo Bay uh, when the Japanese uh, made their attack on December the 7th. So. When they surrendered. Oh, when, when they, they surrendered. When they surrendered, I, when they surrendered, I see. Okay. okay. Uh, Brett Franks will now introduce our speaker for this afternoon. Well, I have the honor and the pleasure of uh, introducing our guest speaker today. Um, he's known me all my life. I haven't known him all of his life, but he's known me all my life. Uh, he is my grandfather. Uh, Mr. Basil Gentry, he's a World War II veteran, uh, served in the Navy. Uh, I don't want to take any of his anecdotes or stories, but he told me he joined the Navy so he didn't get drafted in the Army. <laughs> and you can imagine we've heard that story a few times. He's, uh, he's one of the true uh, true greatest men of my life. Uh, he's he's uh, He's one of my inspirations, and he's one of the men that I hope I could be in one day. So I introduce you to Mr. Basil Gentry. My grandson. I was uh, 15 years old, Pearl Harbor Day, and I grew into it, so I. But I joined the Navy, uh, so I wouldn't have to walk so far. <laughs> you always had a good place to sleep and uh, good food, unless you got a shot out of lunch. <laughs> and, uh, any, anyway, uh, I was 15, and uh, like I said, I grew into uh, joining the Navy when I was 18 on the other side. Any time after that, everybody wanted to go when they said me. I was USS PNA. It was a USS Midway, but, but after, it was the first ship in the Midway after the battle, which I wasn't known then. I was on it later, but they took our name and, and gave it to the aircraft carrier. I was there in Tokyo Bay. I wasn't too far from there when the war was over. I was between there and Okinawa somewhere out there. Okay. Anyway. Tell what tell what your ship carried. Do what? Tell what your ship carried. What's your ship carried then? Oh, it was a tank cargo ship. And we uh, we uh we hauled up. Uh, Bombs, beer, 
<laughs> and uh, B. And B. Do what? B. B. Steak. B. 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 I still didn't hear you. Steaks. Steaks. But anyway, we 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 hauled hauled all that stuff, but we was not too far from where he was in Tokyo Bay. We was between there and Okinawa. So I'm glad to be here. And there ain't so many of us left, but we're some of us still kicking. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Isn't it a blessing to be a part of the United States? Uh, I get goosebumps every time I get to visit, visit with people like Joe Lockenberger and some of the gentlemen that are around here. That, Mr. Gentry, thank you, sir, for being here. Brett, appreciate you being presenting it with us. And Mayor, thank you for each one that's been a part of it. It's a good day, a beautiful day. Thank you for each one of you being here. I want you to take a chance, if it take time if you can, to look at our new renovated facilities here. We're not quite through. We've got a building to put outside. Uh, storage building to add a little more stuff. 
there's plenty of stuff, plenty of stuff. <laughs> the ladies have done a great job and some of the guys helping. We've got a jail cell. If you want to go in there and get your picture taken inside the jail, we can do that. Camilla, she wants to go get her picture taken. <laughs> um, but thank you very much for being here. Uh, we do appreciate each one being a part. We'd like to encourage you to become a member. It costs you 20 bucks for a whole year to be a member of the Saxe Historical Society. Um, and if you have a little trouble with that, we'll front you a little money, maybe. But you can be a part. We have a meeting every third Saturday, which will be next week. We have an annual meeting in March. Um, and you get to be a participant in our community. It's a wonderful place to live. We've been here, my wife and my family have been here for uh, since 88. Uh, we tried to give back a little bit to the community by helping with stuff like this. And I think the people that give their time get more of a blessing than, than the ones that receive it sometimes. So anyway, uh, we appreciate each one of you being here. Take time to look around. I think we've got some nice memorabilia, some all sorts of stuff. Love the flags. Isn't that beautiful coming in the driveway? The Exchange Club in Murphy. Uh, I think, yes, give a good hand. The Exchange Club in Murphy uh, provided those for us. Uh, was there anything else I need to mention? Miss, uh, where is Miss Janice Tillerson? Oh, yes, that's who I need to. Where is Miss Janice Tillerson? Is she hiding again? There she is. She's hiding behind somebody where she is a blessing. She has she has put this on every year that it's, it's been in existence. She organizes it, coordinates it, gets everything together. And thank you, Janice. She doesn't like to be in front of the microphone, so I'm going to. God bless each one of you. Thank you very much for being here, and we're dismissed.